I was having so many audio issues with my current audio mixer for months. This guy has sorted me. Thank you. Man, best freaking tutorial on the entire internet. I swear I have spent the last three days trying to get this sorted and it looked impossible. Issues like microphone setup, microphone VB audio, voice maker VAIO is not an option for me. Very grateful for this tutorial. Had audio issue, issues come up right before a stream, but after spending the whole evening to fix it, I stumbled across your tutorial. My issues were fixed in minutes. My game chat can't hear me. What can I do? Everybody, a big thing came up recently. Uh, I was on Twitter and I saw a tweet by, well, a couple things. A couple different content creators have been doing videos on a new audio plugin for OBS Studio. It's an auto monitor plugin that brings a whole new mixer in to effect in OBS that you can use for your monitor. And there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And I believe if I play with it enough and kind of learned it, I imagine I could probably build a dual PC audio stream for it. But why would you want OBS to do that? What options are there available out there right now for us as streamers? besides going and spending you know a hundred or more dollars or two hundred dollars up to five hundred dollars for a go xlr for a mixer to support our live stream what options are available for us if we don't have the money to be able to do that and what is the issue right now for people like us that don't have that kind of money to spend on a hardware mixer well let's kind of, come on, kind of get into today So let's talk about a few things. First of all, so I think it was ePost Vox. It's the first video I saw that was talking about this audio uh, monitoring plugin. And he was, his clickbait title was, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it is, will this be the killer of voice meter? Okay. Um, and then I think it was uh, Francois Studio came out, I think it's the Francois, whatever he calls himself, came out with a video discussing how it will not kill voice mirror. And that got into a little bit of a little Twitter battle between VB Audio, the developer of voice meter, and frustrated consumers. Because there's a big issue with voice meter. First of all, if you don't understand what voice meter is, it is a virtual mixer. It's donateware. You can go to their web, VB Audio's website, vb-audio.com. You can download a tested version of it right so it's for it would be considered free for testing and then what you do is when you find out that it works for you you pay uh donate fund whatever they want to call it now uh, they originally called it donate uh they have different tier levels of pricing based on your experience and what you're going to use it for but as a general user you can give them ten dollars i think it's 10 or 12 something like that now and you can get all the different versions of voice meter that they design a very basic version that really is a pretty simple little interface to understand and then from there it escalates into more professional type use cases, uh, especially with voice meter potato. It has a lot that it can do. But the problem with voice meter, and this is you know kind of what I was kind of referring to with my, my reads here on the different comments, is that people have a lot of problems with it. Uh, number one, it is extremely difficult to understand if you don't have an audio background. Uh, if you don't understand mixing, if you haven't had your hands on mixers in the past, uh, you look at this and it is overwhelming. You're like, there is no way I'm gonna be able to figure this out. And to pair with that, the documentation that they give while is really good, it uh, is not at a level that mo a lot of you know new users would be able to understand and the documentation is really big. There's not really a good guide out there, uh, written documentation to be able to set you up with how to use voice meter effectively. The second really big issue with voice meter beyond the graphic user, user interface and trying to figure out what all the settings are is its reliability. Uh, there's a big problem with it because it relies on the Windows 10 audio stack for it to work properly. And anytime Windows has an, a big update, they update the audio. And when that happens, it screws up all of your settings inside of voice meter which means that you have to basically rebuild your audio setup from scratch 
if you didn't save anything, uh, which you do have the ability to save your configurations, but even then sometimes that doesn't work, especially with the VBAN function, which I, is a way that you can pass audio over your network from one PC to another. That's a big issue and people just get tired of having to go back and build their audio over again. They want something that they can set it and forget it. And so kind of that's why I wanted to talk about today. So what options do we have right now? Well, right now there really isn't much out there for us. A voice meter really is kind of that option for people that don't really have the money to go out and buy a mixer. And mixers right now are pretty expensive. Even the basic ones are, you know, getting over a hundred dollars now. And that's kind of because it's inflated due to all of the demand on the market with COVID and everything that's happening there and it's all these people doing stuff from home now, especially professional people that want it professional equipment. So the prices have gone up. The Go XLR, you know, is kind of like the hot item for streamers to have because it's a hardware mixer. It's fairly easy to understand, but the preamps are really good in it. Uh, they're Midas preamps, but it has a lot of features that they built into it, including software that can help elevate your live stream with uh, sound drops, with uh, voice mods, that sort of thing like that. Plus it has RGB and everybody wants RGB, right? But it's extremely expensive and it's almost to me a waste of money at $500. It's just something I would not spend $500 on personally. If I were to do that, I would go and I would then get a Rodecaster Pro, which is a really nice mixer in itself. The point is I'm saying is that there's just really not a lot of options out there for us. And this goes to what I would really like to see. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So we really need to a solution that number one is going to be easy to understand for streamers who aren't audio nerds and two it's reliable now we do have something out there problem is you have to have a certain microphone to be able to use it and that is elgato's wavelength now wavelength provides a great graphic users user interface it's easy to understand and what they've done is they've kind of gone about things a little bit different than how voice meter does things oh god what they do is they produce a, their own virtual a bunch of their vir, of virtual inputs they have one for game one for your uh, browser one for your comms one for music all these one for uh, sound effects they have these virtual inputs that is built into wavelength and then what they do is they take advantage of the Windows 10 audio routing that you can then assign specific programs to go to these virtual inputs. That's a great thing. It's super easy to understand and it produces two bus mixes that you could use, one for your headphones and one for your stream that you can control where each of these different audio devices go to. Really nice. And the second thing is it's super reliable. Okay, it does not crash. Uh, I know that people, there are some people that have issues with it, but for the most part, it is set and forget. I personally have not had any issues with mine. It works all the time. So it is basically a set and forget device. I mean, it starts up, you don't have to go in and reconfigure anything. I, it's worked fine for through Windows updates. That's what people are looking for. The problem with Wavelink is right now you have to buy a wave mic to do that. That is a wave one or a wave three. At, and the minimum investment in that right now, I think is $129 in the US. The problem is right now is that all the actual audio mixing is happening inside the kernel of the driver for the microphone itself. So the microphone has to be connected for Wavelink to actually work. Now, once you have that microphone plugged in and Wavelink comes up and it's working, you can actually plug other USB microphones or even XLR microphones with an audio interface into your PC and then route it into Wavelink and it works. They work fine, have no problems with it. So there is the ability for other microphones to work inside a Wavelink. You just have to have the Wave mic plugged in to be able to do that. That's an issue because not a lot of people are going to want to have to go buy a Wave mic just to have some sort of virtual mixing. Even though, in my opinion, the, the Wave 3 to Wave 1 are both fantastic USB microphones and probably under $150 will be the best microphones that you'll be able to find because they sound fantastic. What if Wavelink was able to be used standalone without the use of the Wave mic? And this is kind of what I tweeted out to Elgato yesterday. I said, listen, 
This is a great opportunity, a great idea to be able to take Wavelink. It's an easy program to understand. Be able to use it in standalone. Add some plug-in type things to it, some compression, some EQ, AI suppression, uh, noise gate, and uh, a limiter to be able to make your microphone sound great, even more so than just what raw mic would be, and then be able to use that without having to have a wave mic plugged in. You could add it, you know, you could give a small kind of baseline subscription or a one-time lifetime license, and it wouldn't have to, I don't think it would need to be expensive, uh, you know, $20 for the app. I mean, they're already doing this with some of their apps now. Um, you can get the Stream Deck Mobile, for instance, which is a subscription base. I don't know if they have a lifetime license on that one, but they also have Epoch Cam, which is an app that you can buy for $10, $10 to turn your mobile phone into, or right now it's Apple, soon to be Android, uh, a mobile phone into a webcam. So they are doing things like this. I would really like to see Wavelink come out standalone, say $20 for lifetime license or 30 at the most, but it's going to give you all you need for a streamer. Um, what they would need to do though, because right now it's really not set up to pass audio from one PC to the other, like a traditional hardware mixer would be able to do with cables or with voice meter doing it over your network using V-Band. Um, so there are some options out there though that they can add in that are free protocols that they're already using, for instance, one of which is NDI. NDI uses video, passes video and audio over your network, and you, they could use that audio function to be able to pass audio from one PC to the other. So that's one option. Or, if, I mean, if they wanted to, they can generate their own way of doing audio routing over the network. Um, there are various technologies out there that allow that. I just think the NDI is probably one that works really well because one, OBS already uses NDI. You could have Wavelink on one PC and it's sending out NDI outputs and then Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, whatever you're using, would be able to pick that up as NDI inputs. The NDI protocol is free. You don't, nobody has to pay for it. It's open SDK tools. You can download it and use the protocol inside of your own software. That's really what's so great about it. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's pretty much it. So anyway, guys, hope you have a great day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a new shot. This is from my new desk that I'm going to be doing commentary from. And, you know, I hope you like lighting and everything uh, looks good for you. We're almost done with our studio. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, once Ikea gets all their stuff in stock, uh, we'll be able to continue with the studio updates and finally, hopefully finish so that we can really start getting into content creation for my wife and I. So anyway, y'all be good. Have a safe weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.